Right, who's up next? Ah, Ethan. Me. Hey. Thought we were running a bit low on sorrow there for a second. <laughs> what do you mean we were running low on sorrow? She just got murdered in a dream. But it wasn't real. That's not real sorrow. I couldn't taste the emotion. <laughs> Vultures. All of them. <laughs> Can I not just wallow at my table of infinite sadness and peace? <laughs> Eating my bran flakes of unending agony laced with the milk of sadness, which is probably mostly my tears at this point, let's be honest. I swear to God, if this is another one of those you may have won a new son things, it is going straight <laughs> in the trash. Oh, it's, it's the replacement Sean card I got from online. All their children were gone. Who keeps sending these letters? Uh, it's a propaganda scheme by the uh, Jehovah's Witnesses. Damn, they ain't fucking around anymore. Nope! Never been seen again. Okay, that is indeed a letter. <laughs> these are words. That is an envelope. This is what they call... A clue. Who's they? I don't know. Probably the police. I have to get out of here and find out what this ticket is about. We're gonna sneak out the back here. I don't want to deal with the paparazzi. If we had the time, we could actually play a game of b-ball here. Another running theme in these cage games. You know, you had Tyler and uh, Jeffrey. In Indigo Prophecy, having a b-ball match. No, not when there's uh, some, uh, you know, people thirsty for your blood and pictures outside. You watch, there'll be a quick time event, and one of these houses will try and fall on top of Ethan. <laughs> <laughs> Just knowing his look. Oh, I see. I've got to get in from the other side. <laughs> Silly American cars. <laughs> Come on, now, Tom. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. I'm invisible. And away we go. Drive, drive, drive! <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, dude, give me fair warning. <laughs> I was gonna say that would have been a very short Ethan section. <laughs> That's it. Okay, we're back to we're back to Shelby. An all too familiar situation for me. Crowded places, the anxiety attacks. Trying to find a red balloon. Trying to get your lost son back. It's all it all just tumbles into one, and then you just you know. Just can't deal with it. Gonna, gonna have to make it through the crowd. I can't, can't take crowds. Just can't handle it. I just don't like them. I'm, I'm flashing back to Disneyland Paris. <laughs> Come on, Ethan. You can walk faster than that. I, I can't make it. Too many people. Too many people. Imagine them gone, Ethan. Imagine them gone. Oh, this is cool. I'm kind of like uh, imitating his heartbeat. David Cage, you magnificent bastard. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Didn't mean to do that. Pressed R1 a smidgen too fast. Come on, Ethan, you can do it. We believe in you, son. Go on! Okay, hold it down. Hold it down. There we go. Be real nice if people weren't getting in front of the prompts. <laughs> Can't need to see what I'm doing here. And having come to terms with his anxiety attack, Ethan initiates a rousing bout of chaos control. <laughs> Somewhere in the distance, you can hear a small silver beast mutter the words, "It's no use." 
Oh, I remember this. This section is unintentionally hilarious. Because it's, uh, it's David Cage trying to be all artsy and fartsy, but it just comes across as hilarious, really. Oh, the red balloon! Yes! Dun, dun, dun! <laughs> I prophesized correctly! I'm seeing Jason's! Jason! Oh, God, here we go again! <laughs> Jesus H. Christ! I'm coming, boy! I'm coming! Can you stay still for like 20 seconds so I can find you? Jesus Christ! Jason. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. Don't you dare teleport away. Oh, for you fuck's sake. You son of a bitch! Move out of the way, you goddamn dominoes. Dad. Like, on a certain level, Jason. I, can, I can, like, appreciate the artsiness of this. But on the other... It's just such a weird juxtaposition in a game that isn't meant to have any kind of like mystical elements and whatnot. And yes, I know this is metaphorical, it's not actually happening. Jason. But still. For God's sake, will you stop teleporting? <laughs> will you stop learning how to go through rifts in time, you son of a bitch? I just want one son who doesn't teleport mysteriously away from me. Is that too much to ask? <laughs> Clearly. They were gone. See, Ethan? I knew you could do it. I kept faith. Did you, viewers? <laughs> Clap your hands if you believe in Ethan. <laughs> I do believe in Ethan. I do. We won't be able to hear it, so uh, maybe like record an Audacity clip and send it to us. <laughs> Winners will receive a fun gift bag. Line 18, box number 3. Line 18, box 3. Got it. Did you? 1803. Good stuff. Nope, nope, that's the wrong way, Ethan. <laughs> Swear to God! Hokily doke. Okay, line 8. I'm assuming it should be along here. Here we go. So... Just around this corner or something. No, that's too far. Should be around here. 18.3. Yeah, there it is. On the left. On the left. Might as well check the one we can't open, although I was secretly hoping the code would work for this one too. Wrong locker. There we go. Caca! <laughs> it's a bunch of dead doves. Open the box and receive my majesty. <laughs> well, that was interesting. <laughs> that was a thing. Oh, we're really switching locations now. This is clearly the uh, fuck pacing section. The Motel of Sadness. <laughs> Just off the uh, interchange of depression. In the County of Sorrow. Well, let's take a look what was in our creepy box. Because really, what else has uh, Ethan got to do nowadays, apart from look in boxes and hope they lead him to his son? Ooh, a myriad of things. <laughs> I'm just going to very carefully take the box out of the locker. Fuck it. Okay, lots of origami, a phone, and a gun. 
First and foremost, we examine the origami. I'm not exactly sure what animal this is meant to be. I think it's a bear. Great, this is some kind of Sean scavenger hunt. <laughs> Geocaching for Sean. Oh, I see, it's a battery for the phone. Oh, I was looking at it thinking it was a memory card, but no, that size would make more sense for a battery, yeah. Sean. I don't know that terrible voice acting anywhere. Sean! Damn. That face. It, that had such a lack of emotion to it. Really weird. Like, it's trying to imply sadness by showing him crying. And I like Ethan. I, can to I totally get that he wants to get his son back and he's devastated that he's lost him. But work on the emotions a bit more, David. Please, we beg you. Keep it in the oven for just a little bit longer. So, we have five animals and five trials. Let's just hope that the cleaning lady doesn't throw those out. Oh, hey, it's everyone's favourite anal retentive FBI agent. <laughs> Mr. Jane. Taking a trip to YIO. <laughs> hey, hey, that was funny. Yeah, I suppose. Ooh, trophy. The killer is white, aged between 30 and 45. He doesn't act on impulse, but plans his crimes in a very meticulous fashion. He doesn't have anything personal against the victims, that's why he covers her faces with mud. Oh, I can change the slides by pressing triangle. Ha! <laughs> why does he kill them if he doesn't have anything against them? For him, they're more of an you image smug a fuck, Blake. Oh my god. A <laughs> figure and an orchid as gifts to apologize for what he's done to them. Very interesting. And where does all that get us? I'll play it cool for now. I don't want Blake to know he's getting under my skin. <laughs> That may be true in novels, but there's a child's life at stake here. I really hope there's an option soon to just throw the remote at his stupid face. One detail attracted my attention. The interval between the time when a victim disappears and the time when the body is found ranges from three to five days. But the rainfall is always at six inches, give or take ten percent. I don't know if there's any merit to actually changing the slides, but... Just have fun. Just go for it. <laughs> really confusing. It could be that he puts them in some sort of well or tank that is open to the skies and that fills up with rainwater. Do you get in all this, Blake? <laughs> Take notes, bitch. Then I studied the geographical distribution of the murders. Generally, a killer commits his first murder near to where he lives, so he has a safe place to. Point I'm getting a very Leonardo DiCaprio vibe from looking at Norman right now. Yeah, I can totally see that. By analyzing the locations where the victims disappeared, Jimmy didn't win an Oscar for his uh, performance in this game. And what size is this uh, zone? Uh, two free axe long. For the moment, about ten square miles. Oh, great. There must be 10,000 people live in that sort of area. Well, Blake, maybe if we had like 10,000 cops as good as you, this murder would be solved. It may not give us the address of the killer, but at least it's something to go on. Blake? You're done with this shit right now. I'm willing to listen. Don't be shy. Throw the remote, damn it. Just throw the remote. <laughs> you know what's funny? I actually meant to press calm, but I actually enjoyed that result a lot more. What? ...and can be connected to the comfort zone. I'd like to question them. Damn it. We're wasting our time with this bullshit. The killer's out there. Where's the prompt to just smack him across the face? <laughs> the killer is no ordinary murderer. He is intelligent, organized, and methodical. You won't find him by patrolling the streets. Tell me, Agent Jaden, did you get your 
vast experience on the job, or did you just fucking read about it in some school? Oh, oh! I can't Go for him! Find a oh no! <laughs> no! I'm the better man here. <laughs> I'm gonna take the truth and all my justice and shove it up his fucking bearded ass. <laughs> said it took six inches of rainfall before the victim died. How much time do we have left? If the weather forecasts are right, less than 72 hours. Ooh. That's three days, for those of you who can't work out hours like I couldn't be able to before. Guess we're Majora's masking this shit then. <laughs> Knock knock, it's the fuzz. <laughs> come out, come out, wherever you are. Uh, fun little bit of trivia for you, in about, you know, an hour more into the game, if you look up in the sky, you can see a giant moon with David Cage's face on it, just slowly, slowly falling towards the earth. I will consume, consume everything. <laughs> there is now. Yeah, you like that, Jaden? I didn't need any fancy glasses to do that shit. Blake, motherfucker. Call the cops. Oh. Okay. Well. <laughs> Looks like Nathaniel Williams is a pretty religious guy. Thought we were looking for the origami killer, not the uh, crucifix hoarder. That's a completely separate brand of serial killer. You can find them in the convenience store next to Drops and Baby. Had this idea in his sick little head that I was the Antichrist. I'd come to Earth to persecute him. Real twisted. Might as well do a, a bit of investigation. Before the owner of this humble abode gets home. This delightfully decorated apartment. Friggin' Bible scriptures, like, etched into the wallpaper. Well, maybe he just got them printed and, you know, stuck them up himself, because he really likes those Bible scriptures. Oh, oh, what we got here? The walls are covered with writing. Yes, Jane, that's just what I established. <laughs> Can you not hear me? It's like these characters don't give a shit what I'm saying anymore. <laughs> you've uh, you've left the milk out for Santa, but you've forgotten the cookies and the carrot. <laughs> so close. Come on, man. You know Jesus prefers malt liquor. <laughs> No, he prefers water because then he could just boof it into some nice rose. Candles are still lit. He should be back soon. Yeah, he just went to get more candles. <laughs> this isn't nearly light enough. All the creepers are going to get in. Blake, are you here? Are you actually going to help me with this investigation? No, he's just going to stare at you and sneer like the prick he is. I, I swear, if they quiz me on the amount of crucifixes in this place later in the game, I am not going to be too happy. Well, just look for the option entitled, A Fuck Ton, and you'll be fine. <laughs> too many to count. <laughs> in fact, this entire place is made out of crucifixes. Blake, is that really necessary? You're inside the apartment now. <laughs> I'll, I'll hand it to David. Sometimes I can't tell when a cutscene's ended and gameplay has recommenced. So, just leaves me standing there like a putz. <laughs> just like, um, can I move? G yes, that's okay. Is that it? Have we, uh, got everything? All the signs of a mystical obsessive neurosis compounded by a persecution complex. Is he the killer? You don't have to be a profiler to see he's not a killer. We're wasting our time here. The guy's taking a break from reality, hold up here in this crazy apartment. Yeah, he's on holiday to, uh, buttfuck crazy island. <laughs> Can you go there with Ryanair? I've heard their fares are incredibly cheap. Yeah, you get air miles and whatnot. <laughs> oh. Uh-oh. I think we may have a standoff here. Mexican or no? Christ-like. <laughs> Good timing, Nathaniel. 
Just the man we're looking for. Is that blood on the wall? Is it just ink running? <laughs> or did you just throw a pizza on there? Can you tell us that, Nathaniel? Can you? FBI, I'd like to ask you a few questions. We're gonna close in upon you and make you extremely anxious. I done anything? I'm innocent. Relax. Nobody's accusing you of anything. Apart from maybe having one too many crucifixes, but uh, you know. Do you remember where you were last Tuesday at 4:30 p.m. Here. Don't mind me. I just got a bit of a crick in my neck. I was praying. All day. Was there anybody with you? No. Christ was with me, but no, then again, when soul. isn't he? <laughs> bless his soul, bless his soul. Where do you work, Nathaniel? You have a job? My sole occupation is praying to the all merciful Lord for the salvation yeah, of fair, humanity. Well, I say a fair bit from the two games we've played thus far. There seems to be quite a bit of religious sort of, you, of you know, symbolism going on. Because in Indigo Prophecy, obviously, um, your brother was a priest. Yeah, I think it's shorthand for uh, mysticism and uh, what about the deep voices? storytelling. You still hear the voices? The voices are telling me to hit you, Blake. We know who talks to you, Please we? go through with them. Please. They're literally screaming at me to punch you in the face. Don't speak that name. What does he say Blake, to you, Nathaniel? what are you doing? Well, that was a very natural intervention. <laughs> Just, what are you doing, Blake? Talk about it. He orders oh, oh, Jesus. Got to do something. He needs more and more. Maybe Blake knows what he's doing after all. Oh, I thought I thought that meant leave. Yeah, I thought leave him alone as in tell Blake to leave him alone, yeah. I guess Blake's trying to break him, but what good is a confession if he does? He told you to go and find that kid in the park. The voice That's enough. You leave him alone. <laughs> this is so awkward. Didn't you, Nathaniel? I'm just going to stand here. It's okay, Bobby baby. The mean Blake's not going to hurt you. <laughs> so you're What's Blake looking for? Why is he pushing him over the edge? Him. Isn't that right? The guy is terrified. I always wanted a prompt in a game that said Antichrist. <laughs> I think this counts as badgering a witness. Yes, 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 do it, do it, Nathaniel. I am 100% behind you. I think this counts as assault battery. For Christ's sake, shoot! You're not going to kill the Antichrist with a revolver, Nathaniel. He's much too powerful for that. you got to use a bazooka. Go right for the head. <laughs> Oh, I wish they weren't shaking so much. I'm having trouble making out which is which. Yeah. Team, you shall regret confronting the emissary of the Lord. You shall know. Ooh, he's an emissary power. now. Put the gun down. Now gently put the gun down on the floor. So help me God, I will throw all of these crucifixes in the bin, young man. From the cunning and wiles of the demon, may God Almighty manifest the power of His empire. And may divine power cast Satan and all the other spirits that prowl the world in search of souls. Yeah, this is what gives the police plenty of time to take down religious zealots. Yeah. Start with the speeches, go straight to the shooting. Back away, slowly. It's gonna be fine, man. We'll get you a brand new crucifix. I'll even help you polish it. It's all gonna be okay. Now drop the gun. I thought your only option left was to shoot then. I couldn't see the drop gun for a while. I'm like, well. That seems to be a running problem with this. Sometimes, like, the prompts are obscured by the characters. But I, mean, I can see why it's doing it, because, you know, the thoughts are circulating around the head. It's sort of a, you know, Turn around. pretentious way of showing it, I guess. But, um, yeah, it can be a bit uh, awkward to spot them. I knew that was coming. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. I exorcise. You really think he would have a crucifix on his person just in case he needed one? Okay, freak. The show's over. You're under arrest. Blake gets to be a big man for another day. But like all big men, his time will come. I would have just shot him. Yeah, but you're a complete wanker, Blake. So yeah. Let's just drop that there, shall we? Most of the time, it helps. Just another day in the life of Nam and Jaden.